Alright guys, so this is like take four of how to build an updated geothermal quarry system using the new energy conversion system. So the old system I showed you in episode 9 used pneumatic pipes to generate power and that was annoying because you had to wire each pneumatic pipe into the MFE. Now instead we have this energy bridge system which consumes one form of power transmits it to uh, an energy bridge which then forwards it to an output that converts it to whatever you want. So here I have an IC2 MV consumer taking medium voltage IC2 energy converting it into buildcraft power to power a pump and a wireless output. So I'm going to disable that and show you how to build this thing. So my goal in these tutorials is to make you guys as self-sufficient as possible, but that comes in steps. So unfortunately in this step I'm not going to go too much detail into the pipes I use. So I'm going to use these waterproof pipes and I'll tell you how to build them, but I won't tell you how much they work. So we're going to start off with this gold waterproof pipe. So pipe waterproof is made by ca crafting cactus greens. Um, the easiest way to get cactus greens is if you're near a desert, just grab a cactus and burn it in your oven. So, whoops. And that's what this kind of crafting table means here, but see? Bam. Otherwise, if you have a minium stone, you can just take any dye and keep transmuting it with a minium stone until you get green. Then you just place the green on your crafting table and go to work. So then the other thing you need are these golden transport pipes, which are just two gold plus a glass. And that gives you eight, which is more than enough. So we also need a pump. So the way the system works is it pumps up lava and feeds it into a geothermal generator energy system. So the pump runs on buildcraft power, which is why we need the energy conversion. It's a tank, which is just eight glass, pretty straightforward, glass you make by melting sand. Um, the other thing you need for it is a mining well, which is a lot of iron. So this right here is six iron, plus three, plus four is 13. So you need 13 iron to make this, and then this thing is just this. And you can look at the items like I'm doing this by just hitting the R button by having over, hovering over it. R is for recipe, um, so let's get to work. And I already showed you how to make the tank, but again, we need the tank for storing lava. And I don't know why, but whenever I hit my R key, all of my inventory items decide to sort themselves. And I know it's part of a mod that comes in build cr in Tekken, and I've turned it off before, but I forget how. So this is how we're going to start. The pump we just put on the edge of the lava. It doesn't matter how much lava is there uh, in the nether, you're not going to run out. At least not anytime soon. And then we're going to put one, two here. And you'll see why those are there in a moment. Next we're going to put down the magmatic engine. So before I do that, I'm going to move forward to this. So we're going to put down the emerald pipe first, and this is just because it'll dictate the direction the magmatic engine faces when we place it. So this is emerald waterproof pipe. Um, emerald and wooden pipes work exactly the same, it's just emerald pipes do everything a lot better. So an emerald waterproof pipe we're going to put here, and I'm going to put the engine down, and now we're going to talk about it. So what the emerald pipe does is it's a buffer. So it can take things out of systems. So in a case of a water system, we're storing energy, water, liquid, whatever, in this tank, and the emerald pipe can take it out. A wooden pipe can do the same thing, but it can't pull it out as fast. And I'm going to build five ge geothermal generators, and a wooden pipe can't power five at once. So thus we use the emerald pipe. And the emerald wood waterproof pipe is just you need to make the emerald transport pipe first. So emerald plus glass. Uh, emerald is a little hard to come by. You either need a village where you can trade to get it, or you have to um, 
find it under uh, extreme hill biomes. And both of those are not exactly easy. So if you can't find it, you can always split up your power system and put emerald or wood here and another wooden one here and kind of split up your power that way. So rather than have an efficient single emerald pipe powering a whole bunch of geothermals, you have a wooden pipe powering, I would say, up to three geothermals. So next we're going to attach our geothermal generators. So the geothermal generator produces medium voltage current, and that's something we're going to keep in mind. So geothermal generator is just empty cell, glass, refined iron, and generator. If you followed this far along, you should know how to make all of these. Uh, if you don't know how, just hover over them, hit the R button. Pretty straightforward. So I'm going to attach five of these. Bing, bing, bing. Next we're going to attach it. I like to use glass fiber cable for everything. Uh, depending on the situation, it's not always ideal. This is actually a situation where you could get away with any kind of insulated gold cable. So that is something to keep in mind. When you make glass fiber cable, always, always, always use silver. If you use redstone, you get four. If you use silver, you get six. So you get a 50% increase in yield by using silver. And I'm just going to wire this quick. Bam, so there's the wiring. Next is a power storage system. So we're going to store our power in this MFE. And MFEs, when you place them, the output always faces towards you. Uh, if you miss, you can either pick it back up again, and I would use a wrench to pick it up, but if you have a wrench, you just smack the face you want to be the output, and bam. But again, we've covered that in the past. So next, we need the IC2 MV consumer, the energy bridge, and the BC producer. So the IC2 MV, oh my god, MV consumer is this guy. And it's just gold plus MV transformer, which is lots of gold. And we all know how to make those. And if not, we know how. Again, energy bridge, this, and BC producer. You make the consumer, you put it on the crafting table, bam. The consumer, uh, I would definitely, definitely use the Sterling engine when you make this, because the Sterling engine is made out of cobblestone and stone and everyone could do that so we're going to start with our MV consumer so consumer means it's consuming power it's an input energy bridge is next uh, bam falling to lava we're gonna put it right here And then the energy bridge is used to link producers and consumers. And last, we'll link the, the producer. So BC stands for Buildcraft. We're going to produce Buildcraft power with it. Next, we need to hook these up. So first things first is a wooden conductive pipe. The only way energy can get out of the producer is if you attach a wooden emerald or a special kind of pipe to it. So we'll talk about the special pipe in a bit, but you need either a wooden or an emerald conductive pipe to get it out. So I'm just going to use wooden, since I know that that's enough for our purposes. And I didn't mention this, but wooden conductive pipe, bam, bam, wood plus glass plus redstone. <sighs> phase conductive pipe is what we're going to use to wirelessly teleport our energy. Phase is reference to the teleporting we're doing. So in order to make the phase conductive pipe, first you have to make this phase transport pipe. And this is expensive. It costs eight diamond to make four of these pipes. Once you make these four pipes, you're going to take two of them, and only two of them, unless you need four for some reason, and make two phase conductive pipes. And then we're going to take one of our phase conductive pipes, and we're going to put it here, and we're going to look at it. And this is the output screen. So these are frequencies. Similar frequency pipes can interact with each other. They can be set to send only, so this would send power, or it can be set to receive. So if you want it to receive, it can take input from another pipe. 
So you can make wireless pipes that transport either liquids like water, oil, or lava. You can make pipes that send items through the normal transport pipes, or we can send power like we're going to do. And you can also change between private and public mode. So we're going to leave it to private since we don't want people tapping into our power system necessarily. Uh, so that's this. And next we need to hook our pump up to power. And I'm going to use this opportunity to talk about this cool new item they came up with, which are these, these redstone energy circuits. The redstone energy circuit is a pain to make, but they're really cool. So honestly, I have no idea what this screen means. You take an empty energy conduit, you put it in a liquid transposer, and you get redstone energy circuit out. And I assume somehow you have to fill the liquid transposer with molten redstone. Um, for those of you interested in actually doing this, you can go onto the Ticket Light Wiki, the Wikia, and check it out. Um, if you don't want to do this and you don't want to bother, you can use gold to conduct a pipe. And that should be fine. But I'm going to use the cool new pipe. And the cool thing about the new pipe is that unlike gold pipe, which can keep draining power until it explodes, the new pipe will only take as much power as it needs, so it will never explode. And it can handle a lot of power, and it's more efficient. So the farther it travels, the less energy it loses compared to gold. So now this system is set up, it just needs a jump start, and we're going to jump start it with an RE battery. So we have our filled RE battery, we're going to plop it in here, and it's going to put some juice into the power system. That's going to send it out this way, it'll charge the pump. The pump will send energy to the magma thing, and then it becomes self-sustaining. And then if we look at the MFE, we can see we're gaining power. So the system is working. And one last thing before we go to make sure it's actually working is we're going to set down a dimensional anchor. So I didn't mention this in the beginning of the video, but right here I've outlined a chunk. And the key here is to try and fit your geothermal system into one chunk. And then put down your dimensional anchor. And if you right click your dimensional anchor, this is how many chunks you're using, this is how many are available to you. And the server dictates how many you can have, you can choose how many you're using at any given time. And then you can change the chunk area using these buttons. So. Uh, these are just different um, formats. So an X line is, if you look at your map, you have an X direction. It'll make a line that long. Z, it'll go up and down that far, I think. So I'm going to leave it to none, and that should render just one chunk, the chunk it's in. And so now this system will always work and always have power. And now we need to send that power somewhere. So I send my power to a quarry. And right here we have the quarry. And we're going to look at this. So the quarry here is very expensive. It costs 11 diamond to make, plus all this gold and all this iron. And keep in mind that each of these has four iron and four gold in it as well. So this is a very expensive piece of equipment, but what it does is it automatically mines for you. So it's taking these red rocks, what are these called, netherrack, and mining them and sending them somewhere for processing. And so this right here is the other phase transport pipe. Notice the frequency matches the one we made before, and it's set to receive. And number of outputs is zero, and that's just because this is an outputting power, it's receiving power. And then this right here, I didn't talk too much about these, but this is a normal phase transport pipe. So when you made the four of them, you turned two of them into this. The other two I use for this. I just attach them to my quarry, I pick up my quarry, and I move it. And right now I'm mining in the nether. Uh, honestly, I don't recommend this. There's a lot more ore in the overworld that you can get. So I would probably just mine straight in the overworld. Plus it's easier to move your system since you don't have to keep rendering and de-rendering the nether. And that's it. That's everything. 
I am glad to be back and to have fixed my Minecraft problems. So that's all for now. Thank you for sticking with me as I kind of worked through those three months of issues. Uh, if you're curious, what happened was the one of the Minecraft TechIt updates made it so my computer wouldn't run TechIt anymore. It would just crash. And then I had to install uh, some ATI drivers over my current ATI drivers. And it's a little difficult because I'm running on a laptop. So I have very picky drivers, but it worked fine. Now I have other issues, but at least I can play Minecraft. And I also started graduate school and PhD and all that stuff, so that's that's busy. So there's a personal update for those of you that care. Um, otherwise, enjoy your quarries, have fun, go mine. See ya.